Welcome back to M Hood Fishing, everybody. It is early afternoon, and I am back at this red ear spot, but I'm in a different position. I'm in the weeds here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just like last time, I'm going to try the fly. This is my nine foot tin car rod by Region. This was actually a Christmas gift from Rigged PFA. I have a nine foot line on here, a furled line, and my tippet is just about three feet long, maybe a little long. I might wanna shorten my furled line down a little bit. It's a little windy. This is a Kabari style fly here. I've chosen it for its colors and its size. It's chartreuse and black, might work. Not that great wind conditions right now. There is some bad weather coming in tonight and tomorrow and the wind is starting to pick up. Maybe it, it's a part of what is coming in. It is around 12, but it's gonna maybe come up to 14 while we're here. It's not constant, so it's not too bad. Now this is not a weighted line so much as the last time I was Tenkara fishing. We'll see, I brought other gear. Little, oh. We are getting some follows on that fly. Little unwieldy though. So I just discovered like a lot of people that I don't like furled line and a lot of people don't. And a lot of people that have said they don't like it haven't really explained why. But I think it's because it just kind of kinks up a lot. It wraps around the rod tip a lot. If you want to try and shorten it, it, it just goes crazy once you cut it because it, it is actually like it says it's a furled line it's wrapped line it's a bunch of strands of mono so the rod that i'm using was a kit and it's a region kit it came with that furl line but here i have something that a subscriber sent these are nine foot tapered clear lines we're gonna go with one of these Well, that's better. Venturing out a little bit before I give up on the Tenkara fly fishing thing this afternoon, I wanted to show you something. Now there is a bunch of severe weather supposed to be coming here tonight and tomorrow. Therefore, the levels are much lower out here. You can see right here where it previously was, and you can see it over there on the other side. They usually start pumping things down when there's a bunch of bad weather coming. So, you know, it's like a preemptive thing. There are a bunch of little panfish here. So the question is, if it's so low, how does that affect the red ear that were here the other day that we haven't yet got a bite from? That's probably as soon as I, oh, solid ditch pickle. As soon as I give up on this and start throwing jigs or worms, probably will hit something like that. But yeah, the lower level, are they still over there? Probably. Look at him coming for that fly. A lot of gills. It's all gills that I see in a couple of ditch pickles. I went back into the bush, grabbed this drop shot. It's an ultralight. Let's get some of these gills. Those bigger gill were coming back and forth from back there. I do want to catch red ears later, but I could use these for catfish bait. There we go. There we go, that's a nice one. That'll be good for bait. It finally happened and I didn't have the camera on. Yes, he came up and grabbed it. Yes, finally got something on the fly. And I don't even have my hemos here. They're in, they're in the bush. Yes, yes, yes. I actually had two come up and chase that. I thought I was filming. I looked down and I was like, dang it. All right, more bait. I want to go back to the jungle. Oh, yes. 
Another one on the fly. Little guy, just a little guy. It's a little red ear. I'm finally back in the jungle spot. Wind is really picking up, making it a little frustrating to work the 10 car rod. Time to go to the worm. Let's see if there's any of those big red ears in here. Got one, yes, oh. That's not a red ear. Look at that giant cichlid. Oh yeah, yeah. The giant cichlids are back. That's cool. Let's see if we can get a few more. Got something, it's not too big. There's a red ear for you. See how lightly colored that one is? The other day they were like coming out of here black. Yes, yes. What did we get? It's got a nice fight to it. Oh, finally. Oh, oh my goodness. I thought that was going to be a red ear, but holy smokes. Holy smokes. Is that bigger than the first cichlid out of here? My goodness. All right, we're going to see. Here's the one we just pulled out. Where's the one? Here's the first one. Let me get it in a better position in my hand. Yeah. Oh, no. You spill on my worms, you little sneaky. I'd say we have about enough to make spaghetti, cichlid sketty. Where are all these? There's just a ton of spotted gar, so we have a little bit of little bitty hook. It's the biggest hook I have on me, actually. It's maybe a size two. Got this little piece of cup bait here. They're only spotted gar, but some of them are huge. There we go. And we're going to fish that under a weighted cork. 10 pound test, too. We're going to start by putting it right here in front of the, uh, the grass. I've been watching the spotted gar cruise right up to the edge of that. There's about a foot and a half underneath the cork. Or maybe, no, a foot, about around a foot. I think that's fine for here. It's not super deep. Here we go. Whoa. Runner. Just a gill. Oh. That was a nice hit, but it's not very big. So far, no giant red ears. But I'm pleased with the giant cichlids. This is a red ear, by the way. I'm not saying there's no red ears back there. I've caught quite a few back here today. Just not the big ones. Oh, something came up for that fly. There we go. Got him on the fly again. Yes. That's the third on the fly today. Second one while I was actually filming. Decided to go back to the fly because there's a bit of lull in the wind. And there's overcast. There we go. Oh, missed him. Dang it. Oh. There we go. Got another one on the fly. What do we got this time? Ooh. This is a nicer. That's a red ear that time. Wait a minute, let me get over here and look at this. It's a nice sized bluegill this time. You gotta really strike. I mean, that hook's not, he's not swallow, it's not, he didn't swallow it, but it's down in there. So you just take these hemostats and then there you go, it's out. Got him. Oh, wow, that is the smallest, the smallest fish today on the fly. A spotted gar is playing with my cup bait under the cork there. 
I've got my bale open. I just let him run with it. Ooh, you got a cork under. Nice. Oh, doesn't matter. I'm, I'm changing spots anyway. All right, guys, I want to finish this session up by doing a little more casting with the fly. Might have to just totally just get out of here real soon because it's trying to rain. Not under a big threat, about 20%. Oh no, that's a lot of rain. Time to wrap up the line with the fly on it. We will use it again. That fly worked out really good. Big problem here is I really like this, this fly, but it's the only one like it that I have. Check it out. Don't know what it's called, but I shall find it again. Yeah, I'm not at the point where I'm tying my own flies, but I'll probably get there. I'll probably just look online, see if I can find that. All right, guys, let's go see if we can make some spaghetti out of those cichlids. Let's get this spaghetti going. Guys, I am feeling really tired. I'm running on empty. Apparently breaking the spaghetti pisses some moms off. <laughs> if your mom was Italian, I guess. Man can't believe that I've caught them this size before but I was just surprised <laughs> really beautiful beautiful pretty fish huh these are real grand cichlids with this fish I never cook the skin because the skin is gonna taste a bit fishy so we're gonna get a fillet off of this one and this one we're drying them right now just rinsed them you don't always have to scale the fish to fillet it, though the scales can be rough on the knife if you cut through them. I have this knife sharp. I'm gonna just come down to the rib cage. And I'm gonna come through to just above the anal fin sure I have that all the way this one's not going to produce a lot of meat but I'm not a lot of person so this one and the other one will be enough to feed me tonight with the spaghetti and the sauce I'm trying to gently ride down the rib cage without nicking it and having shards of it in my fillet okay now I'm going to cut right here there I'm cutting through the scales that can dull a knife real quick and there you go there's my little cichlid fillet this is just like tilapia they're in the same family as tilapia tilapia is a cichlid as well this one is a male because of the hump you see that big hump right here all males are gonna have that and this is what we're left with pretty nice nice fillets these two being the, the big male. There's the smaller one. Let's take them off the skin now. All right, so <clears throat> right here at the end where there's not much meat, I'm gonna put my fingers and hold it down to the counter. Do a slight angle slice going down. Now I want to, with my knife flat, holding that in the back there, try to go across. Ooh, I didn't go deep enough. Sometimes that happens. We could always try one more time. It's not much meat that we left, but there we go. We got it. If you try to keep your hand above the knife as you slice, it's just going to fail. Once again, we're going to do that again. We are losing a little bit of meat on the end, but like I said, there's not much there. Now you want to try and keep the knife flat and float across that skin. Did a much better job that time. 
left just a hair right here on the edge but that's not that big of a loss and like i said not losing much meat back here holding it because there's not there where there's not much there where you're holding some fish are easier to do this with others are more difficult it's always a little difficult to get a fillet off a small fish like a panfish like a, a bluegill but there we go we got a little bit of fillet there all right let's do the last one yeah some skin of fish does not taste good and this is one of them we're gonna turn this on a little olive oil in the pan that is ready i want to turn it down a little bit though get this in here real quick i have not seasoned the fish i want to season it before it starts cooking Okay, this is what I'm seasoning with tonight. I'm not going out of my way because I'm ready to crash. I'm going to edit this video first, but man, I've had a long day. There we go, that's enough. Bits of this are going white already. You never want to overcook cichlid because it's not an oily fish. Therefore, if you cook it a little too long, it's going to come out dry and not pleasant. So you see I've covered it. It's going to fog up real quick. I'm going to move it around. Get this ready. Chunky. This is super chunky mushroom. Probably just going to flip these fillets once. Ooh. Already white on the back side of that one. Looking good. A minute or so more. All right, that's good. I'm gonna let them cook a little longer, but now we're gonna add just a little bit of sauce here. All right, ready to go. Be a little gentle here. Probably could have had more sauce, but this will be good. Smells good. Secret weapon, a bit of Parmesan. Tinkara fly fishing is definitely, definitely my new favorite thing. I had a fun time with it today. I learned a lot. Learned that it works really good when they're biting. <laughs> and it definitely worked a lot better when the overcast was there. Mm, let's get a piece of fish in my mouth, see what that's like. Mm. I did right by it. It's not dry, it's just right. I can't stand it when I overcook cichlid. I do not like dry fish. I don't like dry chicken for that matter either. I don't like rain days. Might have one coming tomorrow. Tomorrow's Tuesday. Mmm. Mmm. Cichlid Skeddy. <laughs> All right, guys. One of the reasons why I don't do a lot of catch and cooks is because. Every time I eat dinner, I always want to crash afterwards. But I got to edit this video. So <laughs> I've got to eat a little more of this. But let's get on top of getting this video out to you guys for tomorrow. I had a great time figuring out fly fishing, Tinkara fly fishing. Going to do a lot more of that. Pretty fun way to get my bait and catch other things. I want to move on from gills to catching other things on the fly. Yeah, you're right. Thanks for watching and subscribing. And I'll see you next time.